Hey guys, my name is Ryan. And my name is Miska. Welcome to Overwatch Central. So, it's the start of a new year, some of us may have our own resolutions, but this is one that we want to take in ourselves, but also think a lot of people could learn from as well. Now, most of you know by now, Overwatch is a team game, and it's all about working together, and picks bad communication can really cause frustration before you've even got out to spawn doors. If the game doesn't go well, then many people tend to find scapegoats, resulting in a terrible experience and a lost game most of the time. The frustrating thing is it feels that you yourself can't do anything to sort of amend the situation. Even if you do change here and you've been told off for it, the damage has already been done. But there are ways to coordinate and ask people to basically not be an asshole. So how should you deal with some of these situations instead? Well, let's start with an example. So what do you do here? Is it A. Tell the player to switch because Hansu is not a good hero. B. Give the person a chance to prove themselves. C. Pick Torbjorn and repeatedly run yourself into the enemy team. Or D, ask the guy to consider another pick since you're not sure Hansu is good here. You got 10 seconds. So which one will it be? And that's the end of the countdown. So if you answered A or C, then this video is for you. If you answered B or D, then uh, you can just click off now. Actually no, just watch the video because it, it's it's pretty good. There are many factors and reasons why a lot of people justify themselves blaming other players for throwing or ruining a game. One of the main ones has to do with a hero that the other player picks. There are certain heroes such as Torby and Bastion Hanzo that have a really bad reputation around them and overall they've never really had it easy for themselves either. Because of this and the very common problem and bad habit that people have with blaming your own problems on something or someone else, people then tend to try and find scapegoats on their team. Someone to put the blame on so they don't have to feel responsible themselves. It's cathartic and fair Therapeutic, sure, but it's completely useless to actually want to play a game like this. And this happens on all level of play, but can actually be really damaging if you're looking to improve at Overwatch. There are extremely few games where one person on any team played in an absolute flawless individual level won the game themselves sort of thing. And we've already discussed improving at Overwatch in the past and how it is incredibly important to focus on your own mistakes and learn from them. And whilst a lot of people try to do this, it's also even more common to simply blame a loss on another player. Or you start tilting and forget to sort of learn from the process altogether. Our pal Stylosa made a good video going more into detail about the scapegoat and blame part of this topic, so feel free to click the YouTube card in the top right corner to check that video out. But we're here to break this down even further. Hopefully this video should help some people out and allow certain players at least to have that moment where everything just clicks and they rapidly start improving. And if not, then we hope we've at least entertained you for a bit. Anyway, like we said, step one is to not throw the blame at other team members right from the start. Take a second look at your own actions and you can always do better. But there is also one more really important thing, and that is knowing when you should actually communicate more with your team. Actually ask people to switch and how to do those things as well. So let's begin with the communication bit. I often have Overwatch games where several people talk at the start, greet each other, use the wave emote and all that, but we might also already have issues here. In case anybody sees a hero that is generally placed in the lower part of the win rate ladder picked for our team. Players might flame each other already and the game might be lost on the pick screen. But let's ignore that for now and say that didn't happen. What will happen after this is one of two things. Either one, the game will start going in your favor, or two, the game will start going in the enemy's favor. Now, if the game does go in the enemy's favor, you might be familiar with the following thing happening. Players on your team stop talking. This is the most dangerous thing that can happen if you started off on the right foot with your team. Suddenly you lose that coordination, concentration, and one of the few types of comments that are made after this happens are often negative. Either blaming someone in particular on your team if things are going badly, or alternatively blaming several people for playing badly as a team. If you've come to that point in the game, then sadly you've pretty much already lost. It's unfortunate, but it is the reality of playing in a team-based game like Overwatch. So what do you do to prevent this from happening then? Well, it starts all the way back at the initial pick screen. If you see someone being quick to lock in Hanzo, Widowmaker or any other out of favour hero, lead by example. If you feel that you are the person that often calls people out for doing stuff like this, then change you just saying, can you change, this is rubbish, we're gonna lose, to something like, not the pick I would prefer but let's see if it works. You have to give a player a chance. You want to communicate, work as part of a team by problem solving, but you also don't shit all over the team morale whilst doing so. Recently when playing with our friend Mistronomus, who is the guy behind the Master Hanzo video, we got a person basically every third game that would ask the Hanzo to switch. Are they 
they would just throw the game themselves. I think you can figure out what ends up happening here. Now you might be like, but Ryan and Miska, what can I, as a generally not so communicative player, but mostly a good guy, do about this? I don't flame people, but I can't decide if other players do. Well, let me tell you exactly what you can do. You can do pretty much exactly the same thing as we mentioned before. Lead by example. By simply telling this person that has picked this off meta or just not generally liked hero, that you're more than willing to give them a chance to work with their pick rather than just work against it and work against them. And by doing that you've already set the tone. If you do have a somewhat capable teammate on that unpreferred hero, they will know when it's time to switch. And hey, if that same game doesn't work out anyway and your team ends up losing, don't blame it on that player. At least not openly. If you really think that player was the reason as to why you lost the whole thing, then sure, feel free to stick with that opinion, but there's no reason to type it out into the match chat. If you are not, you'll only be limiting yourself from improving by blaming that player and not looking at your own actions. You might have done amazingly well and be blaming that player, but if you don't look at what you did well that game to try and learn from it, you're just hindering yourself from improving, right? You might also have done really badly that game, and in that case you should just really be looking at your own choices and gameplay to try and improve from there. In the end, blaming the game on someone else in your team very rarely helps anyone, and will nearly always hinder yourself from improving. And that's it for this time, thank you very much for watching, we hope some of this stuff has been useful to you, but also do keep in mind that this video is here to address this topic in a more fun and relaxed way rather than just us ranting about people being terrible. Whilst we do want to help a lot of people improve in the game and to have a better experience, a lot of these videos are meant to be fun in the end. And if you've enjoyed this video, do give it a like as well, and subscribe for more of watch content if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, take care, we'll see you next time.